Wake up. It's time to kickstart your day with Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration. Daily Dose of Inspiration. Good morning and welcome to this brand new day. This is Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration for Tuesday, February 13th, 2024. And today, two day, there's two things today I'm really excited for. Um, today is National Pancake Day. And I like pancakes, especially if they have chocolate chips in them. You know, but it's also, and I know I'm going to get the pronunciation of this wrong, but it's also Fashnot Day. I remember growing up, it was always referred to as Donut Day, so I'm going to leave it as Donut Day. So only if they can make a donut into a pancake, that would be good. But anyway, get your pancake today, get your donut today, and celebrate celebrate this holiday. Today we're going to finish up our series uh, on the phrase, one thing. And I encourage you to go back to Friday's episode and yesterday's episode, because we looked at one thing David desired on Friday. And saw how we need to, how we need to apply that to our life, and we should be striving for the same thing. And then yesterday we we talked about Mary and Martha, you know, the sisters of Lazarus, and how Mary chose to sit at the feet of Jesus, where Martha chose to remain busy. And we're going to see the one thing that we should be desiring or the one thing that we should be doing in that situation. And today we're going to take a look at Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, and we're going to see one thing that the Apostle Paul really desired here. He says, starting in verse 13 of Philippians chapter 3, Scripture says, Brethren, I count myself, I count not myself to have apprehended, But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark of the high, the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Friends, in this section of scripture, Paul is talking about the high calling of God. And in verses 1 through 7, actually verses 4 through 7, Paul is teaching about his pedigree, the things that he had accomplished in life, of how he was a Pharisee, how he was born of the stock of Israel. But then in verse number 7, he says an interesting phrase. He says, but what things were gained to me, that's the things he's listing there in verses 4, 5, and 6. He says, those I counted loss for Christ. Verse 8 says, Yea, doubtless I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, I do count them but dung that I may win Christ. So what Paul is saying is all these things that he accomplished in his life, the things that he did, he counts it all as a loss for Christ, he counts it as dung, he counts it as crap. And the one thing he's trying to do is to, uh, um, let's see, it's found here in verse number 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. In verse 11, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. See, he, that's, that's the one thing he's trying to do is he's trying to make sure that he becomes like Christ, not only in his teaching and in his ministry, but also becoming like Christ onto the sufferings of Jesus, even as far as Jesus' death on the cross. He said here in verse number 12, not as though I had already attained Either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. He wants to obtain that eternal life. He wants to know the sufferings of Jesus. Not very many of us are praying something like that today. 
we're we're okay with Jesus with the good things about the ministry of Jesus and the good things of Jesus like the resurrection like our eternal home in heaven but when it comes to times of suffering and times of trial we're saying wait a minute put on the brakes I didn't sign up for that and that's the things that Paul is desiring and then in verse 13 he says but one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind those things which are behind, he's talking again about his pedigree, about the things that he accomplished in his life. He's saying, I'm going to forget all those things which are behind and reaching forth onto those things which are before me. What are those things which are before him? He's talking about the sufferings of Jesus. He's talking about the, the crucifixion of Jesus. He's talking about understanding the sufferings and the fellowship and, and being made conformable to Jesus. That's a desire. A one thing desire I think we all should have is to become more like Christ and less like this world, less like the things that, that are in the world. Because you see, that as long as we're striving for the things that are in the world, as long as we're trying to live and trying to, to, accomplish worldly things we're never going to become the people that God wants us to be and then he says in verse 14 I press toward the mark for the prize <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus <clears throat> Friends, is that what you're striving for today? Are you striving to become Christ-like? You know, if we're going to strive to become like Jesus, then that means we're going to have to go through the strugglings and the trials and everything that Jesus had went through. We can't have Jesus without his, without his sufferings. And that's something we need to strive for, no matter how hard it hurts. That's something we need to strive for. You know, you can read through the book of Acts and you can see all the things that Paul went through for Jesus. But never once did we see him question his calling. Never once did we see him talking bad about Jesus. Never once did we see him getting tripped up in his faith. Becoming like Jesus, going through the trials, going through the temptations, going through the sufferings of Jesus is the only way that we're ever going to be made conformable to his death and be ready for the resurrection. I know there's a lot of teaching going on right now, and I just happened to have seen some on Facebook um, just this morning as I'm, as I'm recording this. There's a lot of teaching going around that says all you got to do is believe. All you got to do is believe. Well, friends, belief in itself is not enough. Because in James chapter 2, I think it is, he says even the devils believe or even the demons believe. But where are they at? Belief isn't going to make it. It's when you go through those times of suffering and it's when you allow God to mold you and shape you and develop you into the person he wants you to be. Are you ready to allow God to do some work in your life? Father, I just thank you for the, for the word that we had today, Lord, and I thank you for the example that we have in the life of the Apostle Paul of how he, he desired so much to be like Christ that he was willing to give up everything that he had accomplished. And Father, I pray that you give us the same kind of spirit that Paul had. Help us to stand up in those times of trial. Help us to stand up in those times that we're suffering for Christ so that we can develop that rock-solid faith in you. I ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Remember, get into God's Word and allow God's Word to get into you. And then share that Word with someone today. Have a blessed day. Hello.
this is heaven. May I help you? Uh, yeah, I think I found a flaw in your manual. You mean the Bible? Yes. You know that section that says, So in everything, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. Sure. Now, when you say everything, does that mean everything? Or are there exceptions? What is it about the word everything that you don't understand, sir? Well, I have this really obnoxious brother-in-law, and I would love to just take some chicken feathers and some hot uh, chocolate sir. syrup and... Sir? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, surely there's got to be an exception to that rule. Trust me, sir. How about a loophole? There's a very good reason why there's no exception in that section. I don't think whoever wrote that ever met my brother-in-law. Regardless, sir, that section is a part of God's standard for how we are to treat others. We can't apply his standard only when it's convenient. It's easy to think our circumstances are unusual, but are you willing to obey God even when it's tough? Another message from Lifeline Productions, the comic strip of radio at lifelinepro.com. 